It's the 16th of February. Uh, it's two days until we're back in the studio in Manchester with all the players. And I'm pretty much there with the arrangements. I've been tweaking them for the last couple of days, um, changing the order of some of the tunes and uh, altering some of the orchestration and arrangement. And now I'm kind of at probably the most boring stage, but, but it's such a necessary kind of part of it, really. And so I'm going through and just getting the parts all neat. Um, so I thought it might be interesting just to show where we're at now with a kind of finished suite. Um, so this is the M&M suite. And just kind of show a little bit. I'm not going to show too much because it really is a lengthy kind of um, uninteresting process. But it's important to me because I think if you spend uh, longer on the part preparation, um, on the copying, then the session will be more successful. I think this is something that happens a lot in film scoring. You've got copyists who do the parts so that everyone can read them they make sense they're clear uh, so that when they you know when the musicians sit down and they hit the record button it's easier and, and kind of uh, more efficient to get everything down well and we've got on Tuesday we've got five hours uh, with breaks as well but five hours with the musicians and then the same on Wednesday and so I've been trying to budget the time well so that we're not uh, you know, just taking our time, but at the same time, we want to make sure that it's good. And this is probably the longest suite that we've done. I think maybe the Net Sky one was a little bit longer, but this is um, nearly twice as long as the, the kind of suites we've done over the last few years. So, yeah, so I'm just going through now and I'll just show some of what I do with the part preparation. It's nothing revolutionary that I've come up with, it's just something that I was kind of taught and and I really value. Um, so if I just jump into it, so we've got the score here, which is a full, the full score, which I'll use um, in the recording, you know, to conduct. Um, and so here's the piece. Um, it's come together well, like it, there was a stage where I was worried and, and kind of, well, not worried, but just kind of felt like maybe it was a wild goose chase. And then one day last week, a load of stuff just kind of came together and, and um, yeah, I, I wrote the end of it, which I think helped it because I got a, a beginning and an end and then, you know, everything else kind of comes together. So this is the score and then what I do is literally go into each part and neaten it up. So I've done this one already. This is the first flute part. Um, I'll show you a part that hasn't been done. So let's look at trombone one. So you can see there's just it's just a bit messy to look at like there's things like this here which is obviously not going to be very clear for the player they need to know the tempo but also it's just making it look like a piece of music and so it's I kind of format it and make sure there's nice spaces between the staves things like this I might try and avoid so I'll put this one on its own line uh, same with this and I might not do it so much with the suite but with with things where it's kind of four eight bars you know 16 bar phrases i'll put eight or 16 on a line so that it's just visually clear um there's nothing worse uh, than having kind of seven bars on a line and then the eighth bar of the phrase on the next line if that makes sense um because it, again it's it's me meaning that now i can look at this part and it's it's clear and things are divided into sections well um, so that you know on the first read it should be a pretty um, successful playthrough you know and so well uh, yeah I'll go through each part individually obviously I've skipped to the trombone here there's things like this which I would like to neaten up um, more from a kind of OCD perspective but again I I do think that um, you know, the reason why, I mean, classical concerts, for example, but, but all live music, people, you know, dress in their concert clothes. Um, and I think in the same way, having music, you know, looking professional. So you turn up to a, a recording session or a gig and the music is clear and it looks like someone spent time, you know, caring about page turns and things like that. It helps you kind of get in the right mindset and in the right kind of frame of mind to 
do a great job. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the main reason I do it. Um, and so, yeah, but this will take me probably, for this piece, because it's quite a lot of pages per part, it'll probably take me a couple of hours, if not more. Um, and I won't catch everything, you know, there'll, there'll be a rehearsal mark, you know, like a, a figure that'll be kind of out of place or whatever. But it's just, it's just getting it from what it was. I mean, if we look at one of the string parts, for example, you know, this is a nightmare. And unfortunately, there's not kind of an automation or a plug-in to, to just neaten it up. Um, or there isn't one that I know of. So if, if anyone knows of one, let me know. Um, yeah, the good thing about Sibelius is it has, I mean, over the years, it's got better and better. You've got um, magnetic layout is one thing. So it'll make sure that, well, it's supposed to make sure that things don't overlap. So when you when you typing things in to the score when you when you're writing the score, it won't put kind of a title over a, a um, you know a tempo or something like that. I don't think it's as good with the parts either that or I haven't got it turned on for this one. But um, you can't rely on anything you know automatic. It is a it's software at the end of the day. So you've just got to go through and and you know think if I was going to perform this, would I really want it to look like this and of course, no, I wouldn't. And you know, you've got bits of text sticking off the page here, so I need to move that there. And yeah, so so this is kind of it's just such a necessary part, um, but it is the most boring part. And it's always at the end, obviously, because the the arranging has been done. I've written the music. I've kind of got excited about the music itself. Now it's just the the kind of preparation for the day. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, once I've done this, I would normally print, but we're hoping to go to iPads. So most of the musicians are bringing iPads this, this week, which saves a lot of paper and a lot of time as well, because once I've done this, it's then printing all the parts. And so that would set, set off going, and then that's going to take a while. And, um, and then Rhiannon often sellotapes the parts, so you've not just got loads of loose sheets of paper everywhere. So we'll sellotape them together into pairs, you know. And so there's all this this stuff that goes on before the players come in, but I think that's why we can get so much done in a short space of time because of the the prep and everything being ready. And so we'll also have Tom and Mark, our recording engineers, will be there three hours before the session on on both days, just to make sure that you know everything's ready to go, that the headphone inputs are all there, that the microphones are all set up, so that when the musicians arrive, they can just sit down and we can start playing you know in theory that's that's what happens um and so i'll probably do a, i'll probably kind of do another video where i talk about what i have with me to do the videos you know taking my cameras and um speak a little bit about why we use headphones and things like that <clears throat> but i'll do that in another video i mean this is this is basically just to show what happens to make sure that the music is there and I, you know any musician will know this but i i just think it's so important to get it as clear and as professionally looking as possible so that um, the musicians don't have any excuses. <laughs>